Hi, it's me, Kay Cook. And at the beginning of COVID-19 lockdown, um, I embarked upon a series of interviews with really interesting people to inspire resilience in, in everyone, really. And one of the greatest privileges was to be able to interview Dr. Richard Bandler. And the full interview is available on YouTube. But what we've done is we've broken it up into bite-sized chunks so that you can really get those juicy bits and just uh, tune in to the wisdoms of the bite-sized chunks. So here's one of the first bite-sized chunks, and it is the bit where I ask him, what is resilience? Hi, it's me, Kay Cook, and I'm here again to talk about thriving in this current situation and building resilient skills for life. And I'm absolutely delighted that today to be able to have a conversation, an inspirational and interesting conversation with somebody who's very important in my world, and that is Dr. Richard Bandler. So welcome, Richard. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me, Kay. <laughs> so, uh, Richard, wow, we could talk hugely about, um, about NLP and, and the background and the for, forward thinking and everything that we might regularly talk about. But actually, what I think would be really important for this current time during COVID-19, where we're all in lockdown throughout the whole world, is the thing that uh, people ask for and need desperately, which is the subject of resilience. And I wonder if, first of all, you might be able to share some, some thoughts about the, the topic of resilience. How, how do you see it as a big chunk? Well, resilience, uh, it, in a nutshell, is your ability to rebound from difficulty. And on planet Earth, I can guarantee you, things will go wrong. Uh, you know, people die, people have divorces, business collapses. Uh, I prefer to not to think of this as the COVID-19, but as the grand pause. Uh, we've all had to take a grand pause in our life. And the question is, uh, do you look at it as in terms of what disaster it could be? A lot of the people I've talked to are sitting around fantasizing getting the virus. And I think that's bad planning. I think that uh, if you get the virus, you should be thinking about getting over it. And if you don't, you should be thinking about how to avoid it. And more importantly, how to spend that extra time. Uh, I got a thing from the local symphony here in Dallas, and uh, they sent us a thing, and they said, during the grand pause, uh, we're going to broadcast on a certain station, you know, and we're going to rehearse even more special pieces of music. And they went down a list of things they were going to do to become a better orchestra. And I think all of us should look at this grand pause as an opportunity to number one, catch up on things. Uh, number two, uh, uh, the opportunity to plan how we're gonna come back ferociously. And you see, if you're gonna make pictures in your head, you might as well make ones where you succeed uh, because your brain is gonna do what you think about. Once you start thinking about things, your whole neurology lines up to follow it. Uh, successful athletes don't sit around and imagine failing unless they go into a slump. And every time I work with an athlete who's gone, done really well for a while and then starts doing poorly, they start asking questions like, what if? Uh, you know, people are telling me, you know, they go, what if this never ends? And I'm going, well, uh, you know, if it never ends, we'd all be dead. You know, it's going to end. Uh, everything ends. You know, uh, war, war two. People thought it would never end because it went on so long. But they kept thinking about how to end it, and that's what got it over with. When you look at yourself in your mind and you see yourself having problems, resilience is built out of changing that picture, just literally whiting it out and putting a better picture in its place. 
people survived concentration camps in World War II, and they didn't survive it by giving up. The people who gave up literally faded away and died. The people I talked to, because when I wrote the book, The Secrets of Being Happy, we found out that, that people's, uh, there's medical research that goes on. Garner Thompson researched all the medical research about how being happy allows you to have a stronger immune system, how to recover from surgery faster. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. It, it's good for you to be a happy person. But happy wasn't like la 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 laughing. Happy was when people felt they had a purpose. And when you think to yourself, what am I gonna do as this ends? When you start planning and methodically, especially small business people are being hit very hard, they have to start thinking about how they're gonna use the spare time to be very prepared to come back ferociously because people aren't gonna be jumping into restaurants and running out to have their nails done. They're all gonna be a little paranoid, so you're gonna to have to entice them. You're gonna to have to make sure that your place of business looks safe and is safe. And, uh, and if you're a resilient person, what it means is, is when you get hit over the head with the worst of everything, your response is to become more determined. And, uh, it's funny, whenever I was interviewing people early in my career, I noticed something funny, a lot of very successful people. And I said, and I would ask them the question, I said, what made you, when you were so poor with so little resources, determined to be able to take this business to be so successful? Uh, about three quarters of them stopped and put their fingers here. And they go, let me think about it their expression would change and they'd start to talk. So I started talking to my clients who were not so determined and getting them to focus on these two points right below the eye. And if you just concentrate in your mind and you think about it, you let your focus of your attention go to your ears and then just go across to here and focus, you'll discover you just feel more determined for some reason. I don't know what it is, it's probably some connection between your neurons and your brain and your eyes and states of consciousness. I'm sure neurologically we'll figure it out someday. But in the meanwhile, once you start to feel a little determined, you start to make pictures of your being more determined. The more determined you are, the more resilient you will be. Because I guarantee you, all of us are gonna take a hit. I, you know, I've been home for three weeks. They've canceled almost everything I'm doing this year. And, uh, you know, I'm having to juggle all kinds of things, but I'm not thinking about going under. I'm thinking about how I'm going to make it through and how I'm going to come back twice as strong. And that's what I think everybody should be doing. The other thing is, during this grand pause, is a perfect opportunity to be determined to catch up on the things you haven't caught up on, clean that closet you haven't cleaned, to stay in the, in, in the mode of being busy, of having a purpose. Don't just let this time wear you down because then you won't be resilient. Uh, when people have a purpose, they're always a lot more happy. Make a list of all the things you've meant to do. A lot of people wanted to start painting, uh, start drawing, start playing music, uh, you know, go back and play the guitar again. This is a perfect opportunity because probably when you started those things, the internet wasn't as full of lessons as it is now. And my grandson came to visit me once. He came in my studio and he looked at the guitar and he said, I'm learning to play the guitar. And I said, would you like a lesson? And he said, nah, there are thousands of them on, on, on YouTube that are better than you are. And, uh, you know, to me, I, I didn't even know that. He started turning on things on my computer. And, and there were great musicians giving lessons. And I thought, that's great. I wish that had been around when I was young. Uh, and it, your ability to learn new things is endless given the Internet. And uh, if you take those bad pictures in your head, shut them down and make pictures of spending your time wisely, you will become more resilient.